disorders by saying you're sick and you have to gain weight or you have to stop throwing up. I think it's much deeper than that. I started Montanito after being in private practice for several years, running hospital units, and realizing that I just didn't think that was the kind of place for people to get better. I really wanted a place that was home-like, a place that people could sort of live as a family, sit around the dining room table, go in the kitchen, get their hands on in the food. I wanted to have a place where I thought would be inspiring to them. We have a lot of recovered people. People who have done the eating disorder thing, people who have been there, done that, they're over it, it's gone. That's different from, you know, being in hospital or being in another treatment centre for me, you know, is, is that aspect of having the staff who are recovered, who understand, who have struggled and, and they're amazing examples of what it's like to be recovered. When they come in, we are with them. After they eat, we're around them. We're on top of them, you know. We make sure that they are unable to go throw up or unable to go in their room and try to exercise it off. We're with them if they're going to cry and sob because they just ate. You have to comfort them through that process and you slowly get them up to where you know they have a more natural relationship with food a more natural relationship with weight. When I worked at a hospital program one of the problems was we would send them down to the cafeteria and they would go through the cafeteria line and get their food and never had any relationship to the food. They didn't have to shop for it, they didn't have to cook it, wash it, um, prepare a meal for themselves, sit down at the table, make it nice, have candles, make it something enjoyable. I noticed that people would get well in the hospital setting only to leave and then relapse because they didn't have an experience with food. The way the media talks about it, it's almost like food is bad. And I always teach clients, there's no such thing as a bad food. There's bad eating habits, but there's no such thing as a bad food. It's really our relationship to food, our relationship to the way we use food, the way we use food to comfort us, the way we use food to make us feel better or strong or in control or successful. I think what I have to try to do to help people is in some ways be the antidote to what happens in the culture. You need to limit exposure to television and media. I don't think we should use it to babysit our kids. I think that we have to be careful at how much they watch, but you gotta think, you gotta take the time, you gotta spend time to come up with other alternatives. Read together, you know, go for bike rides together, go for walks together, play games. I don't allow the fashion magazines and things like that in Montanito. Um, I limit their use of television. It's the same thing about weighing. I don't allow them to have scales, and I don't let them get on the scale and weigh themselves, and I don't even tell them what they weigh. It changes your, your psychological frame of mind to be focusing on any number and measuring your self-worth by it. I experienced relief when I gave up the scale in Montanito and have no desire to go back. There's a toilet you throw up in and then stand on the scale and then throw up and then stand on the scale and look at yourself in the mirror and just, I would just like want to scream. Like it's just not, it's not ever enough. Just, it doesn't end. It just doesn't end. Also, I'd say it extends to more than scales. It extends to clothes size. Your pants or your, you know, your pants can be your can be your scale. I have to not look at the sizes. Like I pull a bunch of sizes that I know are in the range, and when I get home, I cut the tags out. Done. I don't weigh myself now ever. Like I, I refuse to step on scales at doctor's offices or anywhere. I just don't want that attachment. I want to be free from that because that number doesn't reflect anything that's going on in my life. It's just not important like that. I couldn't tell you what any of my friends weigh. I have no idea what I weigh. And it's so freeing. I haven't known my weight in like seven years. I haven't weighed myself and haven't looked at my weight. And it's just like, thank God I have that freedom. It's giving him a break from all the ways that we are taught to measure ourselves. Mothers come to me and say, but what do I do? You know, my kid's overweight. And I say, don't talk about weight. Talk about health. You can't have the focus be on their weight. How do we help people focus on health rather than on appearance. If you don't make health your focus and you focus on weight, that sort of says anything goes as long as your weight's okay. In this society, we reward willpower, no matter, in some ways, no matter what the person is doing with it. What you really have to do with these people is you have to look at their characteristics and say, yeah, fine, but it doesn't take any willpower for you to pass up the cookie. 
That's easy for you to do. You want to show me you have willpower, eat the cookie. Food and weight and shape and eating and exercise have to take their proper perspective in your life. Everybody who walks through my door, I consider has sort of two selves, an eating disorder self and a healthy core soul self. That eating disorder self gets stronger and stronger and stronger over time. And they might not necessarily recognize it as a sort of a different part of themselves. As soon as we start talking about it though, it becomes very clear to them and a lot of them do recognize it. And the goal is to help people get more in touch with their soul self. They are so disconnected from it, they're leading what I call a, sort of a split life. One of the things that we teach at Montanita is this concept about ego and soul. And the eating disorder lives in the area of ego. I, me, mine, how much, how far, how long, all quantified, all accomplishments. I have somebody play dead and they lie down on the floor and all the other clients sit around in a circle and I say, okay, I want you to pretend that Kathy here just died. And there she is still in the room, but she's dead. And I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to divide it in half. And on the left side of the piece of paper, I want you to write what's still here in the room. And on the right side of the paper, I want you to write what's gone. And on the left side of the paper, you know, they have things like, you know, a lifeless carcass of flesh, right? And on the right side of the paper, they invariably have things like spirit, soul, you know, essence. And I say to them, okay, look at the paper. Let's say Kathy really did die. What would you want? What's the most important part here? What would you want to stay connected to if she were really gone? Like stuff on the left side of the paper, stuff on the right side of the paper. Of course they don't say, I want to be connected to this lifeless carcass of flesh, you know? They say, well, her essence, her spirit, her soul. I say, okay, so that's the most important part of her when you remember her, right? It's not her body. So how much time are you spending nurturing, caring for, thinking about whatever, the stuff on the left side? of the paper and how much time you're spending on the stuff on the right side of the paper. And that's how we get into that discussion about how their life has become so unbalanced in terms of where they are focusing all their energy and attention. I find that when we help people get connected to living a more soulful life, really the need for the eating disorder is not as strong. When you find that again, then you don't necessarily want to go over here and starve yourself or throw up your food. If there's any cure to eating disorders, that would be the closest thing to it, you know, is, is just being surrounded by women who are powerful and strong, who eat and aren't obsessed and aren't locked in that cage that the media and society and eat our eating disorders want to put us in. I know people can get better. It takes time and it takes commitment but I see it all around me, I see it every day. Not every day I love my body, but the most important thing that I get to have every day is I get to sit and either converse with somebody during my meal, I get to be present. My perception has shifted. I can be okay in my body. I can be okay with it the way that it is, and that's okay for today. I see the world completely differently. I say to them, what are you recovering to? It's, we always debate, what are they recovering from? Is it an addiction? Is it a disorder? Is it a psychiatric illness? But really a question is, what are you recovering to? One of the things that Montanito does is I think it gives them that vision.